Okay, today we're working on a 2008 Acura TL Type S with a 3.5 liter um, engine, but this is a J-Series engine. This is the same as in your Odysseys, your Cords, uh, your TLs, CLs, MDXs, Ridgelines, Pilots. But uh, what I'm experiencing here is, um, I thought the timing belt was off and it's not. And uh, getting misfire codes in cylinders one, two, and three, the front are okay. But I uh, wanted to find out what was causing the cylinder misfire. been chasing this for a while. And um, what I found out is that uh, when you fire up the vehicle, uh, white smoke comes out of the tailpipe. Getting the misfire codes. So pull the spark plugs. And they are pretty black on the rear cylinders. And um, I'll put a picture of that right now. But I want to do a leak down test to see, uh, to see if the engine is completely sealing or if the cylinder is completely sealing. The weird thing is, is cylinder number one, farthest to the left, has 210 PSI. Number set two cylinder has 170, and number three has uh, 210 as well. So 210, 170, 210. What a cylinder, what a leak down test does is you actually put air into the cylinder, and it either comes out, if, if there's a leak, it's going to come out a different, couple different places. One, it could come out of your intake, which would mean your intake valve is bad. It come out, could come out your exhaust, which means your exhaust valve, valve is bad. It could come out past the um, oil fill cap right here, which would mean you have um, worn rings. Um, if you see it coming out of your radiator, right down here, then it could mean you have a blown head gasket. So uh, I have a leak down tester kit from Matco. Matco Tools CLT2APB. I'll put a link in the description below to a, um, I think it's an OTC kit. But uh, this, this Matco kit was running about 180 bucks, 200 bucks. The one on Amazon that I'll put a link down in the description below is about 80 bucks. Um, if you're gonna do this, Spend a little bit of money on it. I know some of the cheaper kits only allow you to go up to like 20 or 30 PSI. The uh, air compressor I'm using will actually go to 120. And you do need an air compressor to do this because you're basically shoving air down into the cylinder to find out where the air is going. And that'll lead you in the direction of what you need to do to fix the vehicle. But I want to show you how to do this. So the kit comes with a uh, gauge. It allows you to see um, how much PSI you have, and then it shows you the amount of air leakage that you're having. It also comes with this hose that you screw down into the uh, spark plug hole, and just depending on what size you have, the, the adapter is on this one already, but just depending on the size of spark plug you have, you can either use this adapter or not use this adapter. So the kit comes with this hose, the adapter, and then the gauge kit. And then you have to hook up air, shop air, here, and you hook up the hose to this part right here. But I'll show you that in a second. So. One thing I was experiencing, let me get this power steering pump out of the way. So depending on what cylinder you're working on, you can see right down here on the front cam, it shows you. So right here, I was working on cylinder number two. The firing order for this engine is one, four, two, five, three, six. So it's a good idea to go ahead and test all your cylinders out and you just go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll put a picture up of the, uh, cylinders and the in the firing order as well but one thing i was running into is that when i would put compressed air down to the cylinder the engine would jump so to combat that i have this um, genius zero offset wrench 19 millimeter 17 millimeter and i put it onto the front cam you might have seen me take it off this is a 17 millimeter bolt i put the 17 millimeter side on the front cam and then i put the other end below this bolt right back here this engine uh, spins uh, clockwise, so it'll go this way to the front. So if I stop it from, if I put the uh, wrench here and then I put it underneath the bolt here, it's going to want to force itself up. So that's how I stopped it from moving. So let me show you that real quick. So just take, uh, make sure you're on the correct cylinder, and then I'll lock it into place. The flat part of the wrench, because you can see that this wrench comes out a little bit and allows you to get down in there. Let's say you're trying to pull this pulley off, it allows you to get down straight in there. That's why they call it a zero offset wrench and you can pull it off. If you guys are interested in a set, I'll put a link in the description below where you can guys can pick one up on Amazon. 
but the flat part goes against the uh, cam here. Then I push this down underneath that, okay? Next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead, I'll screw this, the hose, down to cylinder number two, which is, this is cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll screw it down to cylinder number two, get my air compressor up to about 100, 110 foot, or 100, 110 PSI, and I'll show you how you, how you guys connect the uh, gauge and how you dial that in. But like I said, it's a good idea to go ahead and take, off, take out all the uh, spark plugs, which I've done on this vehicle. Also lock it into place because uh, when I did it, it wanted to rotate on me. So lead the hose down onto the back side on cylinder number two. You're going to want to screw this thing all the way in. You don't want it to, you don't want to over tighten it, but you don't want to have it loose. You just want to snug it up. And the reason you want to do that is because you don't want air escape, escaping out through the spark plug tube. So just working it in. I'm turning this with my right hand and guiding it down with my left. Turning that as well as I turn the top and the bottom. And we're almost there. Okay, stop turning. Okay, now I get my gauge, right? And uh, then I'll, let me get some compressed air. Okay, got it all hooked up to shop air. PSI is reading zero. Leakage is 100%. What you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the valve right here. You're gonna bring this gauge all the way to set where it says zero. And then this is gonna show your PSI coming from the uh, air compressor. And what you're gonna look for is how much leakage you're getting. So you can see 10 to 40% is low, 40 to 70 is moderate, uh, 70 to 100 is, is high. So you want it to be somewhere between zero and like 20%, 20% or lower. But to get your gauge to the zero, you have your regulator right here, you pull down on this, and you're gonna turn it. clockwise until you get to zero. So I'm right at zero, see? It's showing me shop air is, what, 95%, 95 PSI, I mean. The reason you want to put the uh, cam on the number two cylinder is you want the, the intake and the exhaust valves closed on that specific cylinder. So you have to make sure that you have the corresponding intake and exhaust closed for it to work on whichever cylinder you're working on, right? So if you're having, if you're working on cylinder number one, you wanna make sure that the cam shows one so that it's closed, the intake and the exhaust are closed. So I know the intake and exhaust are closed on number two, so I'm gonna hook up the shock there. All right. So it's not a big leak, it's a small leak, 20%. But it's giving me a misfire. It's not coming out of the intake. It's not coming out of the uh, radiator. It is coming out of the uh, oil fill tube or oil fill cap. And I'll put the mic down there, you guys can hear it. Okay, did you guys hear that? So that means I'm. Well, I kind of messed up on that last video, so I wanted to make some corrections for you guys. And the mistake that I made in the last, uh, previous part of the video is I did not have the valve cover off. Okay, so I'll put up the official directions, quote unquote, by Honda on how to do a leak down test for a Honda J-Series V6. But in my opinion, they're wrong. Let me tell you why. So when I did the test, I didn't have the valve cover off, right? And what I showed you guys is that there was air coming out of the oil fill cap, right? Which there was, but let me tell you why it was happening. So one thing that it didn't explain to us in the, in the directions by Honda is that there are valve tube seals. So you have your valves, you actually can't see them. I can take you over the other engine and show you, but you have springs right, right there. Inside those springs is a valve. Those are the ones on the back of your exhaust. The ones in the front are your intake. Those valves at the base of the head in the valve is a seal, a little tiny tube seal. And those tube seals keep oil um, from going inside the cylinder and oil from going into your head or exhaust gases going into your head. When I had the valve cover off, my, my compression was good on one, two, and three. So on one, it was 210, three. I mean, on one, it was 210, two. It was 173 was 210. 
and a lot of guys are saying that's not that's not a bad ring. You can't have a bad ring with that good of compression. So I was thinking, beat myself, beating myself up over it, beating myself up, beating myself up over it, and I decided to take off the valve and I took off the um, rocker arms as well, and um, for the exhaust, the intake. I'll put a link in, in the description for that video as well. I got a lot of video to edit, a lot of video to edit, and I'm helping guys out with their other with other channels too. But lo and behold, I find out that it is the um, valve stem seal that is leaking on cylinder number two on the exhaust side. So I'll show that to you here in a second, but uh, I'm glad it's not a ring because I didn't really want to go in there and replace the rings on this thing. There are cases of rings being bad, mostly on the Accords, not really on the TLs. I, I searched and searched and searched online for anything that showed me any kind of bad rings on the TLs, but I didn't find anything. Um, in some cases, in 2007s, they saw cracked heads on the uh, on the J Series V6s. I'm not sure if it's a 3.2 or 3.5. If someone knows, please leave a comment in, comment below. But um, that's a lot better than having a uh, having a bad ring. Because I'm gonna pull this. I'm gonna pull the valve. I'm gonna pull the springs out. I'm gonna pull the um, I'm gonna pull the seals out as well. And what I'm gonna do to keep the valve from dropping down in um, when the spring is not attached, I'm just gonna take some rope shove it down or remove the spark plug and shove some rope, nylon rope down into the, um, down into the piston. Just have that, you know, coil up like a little snake and stop the uh, valve from, from uh, dropping down. You could also bring up the piston up to top dead center and the valve would, uh, the valve would rest upon the top of the piston, but I don't want to do that. I'd rather put rope. Rope's a little bit more forgivable than having a piston and a valve contact each other. 